DJ Saul again. I had a question. Uh, is this is this gonna be built off of all the um, so is everybody that's in this should already have taken the course, right? So so that's no, 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 information. No, no, no. No, no, this won't be just based on who has already gotten the course and information. Uh, this, is, this is a general conversation and conference that I'm having with certain people who stuck out to me that seem to be serious about their music business, and I made it available to all people. Oh, okay, okay. So, so, so there it might be a couple people here that haven't even taken the course. That's right, Nick. There are. That's correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them. Okay. <laughs> that's what's up. You know, that's that's what I'm really looking for too, so, you know what I mean, not just brothers who have already gotten the course and taken the course, but people who uh, have no information at all, you know, this is for those um, may have or may or may not have or be where you are right now in your music career, and they have questions that they need to ask, and it may help you, it may not help you. Um, the whole purpose, though, is like I said, making myself available so that you guys can ask whatever you need to ask me, that is, wherever you are in your career right now, or whatever you're trying to do in your uh, music business. Okay. I can start it off and say this, man, that in in the music business, most of us get it confused. We we really don't look at this as a business, but what we do is we look at all of the people that we listen to music, we hear their albums, we hear their songs, we see them on videos, and we get it misconstrued. It's a passionate thing that once you are in the business, it comes off just like, you know, I, I got there by chance and I'm just the best of what I do, and that is completely 100% wrong. You know, this is a business, and those people that we buy their records and we see them on videos, they have a business in place, and they have. if they're not conscious of their business, someone else is, and they're taking care of business for them. What I'm trying to do is make sure that all of us who are conscious that this is a business are doing the appropriate things to make sure that we don't have the gripes and the, and the ups and downs that a lot of people have already in the music industry. And I have met literally over 100 artists that you guys know of that are still going through their ups and downs. Um, proof in the pudding would be this. A lot of artists that we grew up hearing, you don't no longer hear about them anymore. They didn't have their business together. Real simple. Okay. Right. So, you know, I want everyone to be in that mentality and mindset when they're on this conference call so they'll know that this is just not a uh, you thing, this is a general business thing. And uh, until we take it seriously as a business, you're not going to succeed because there's going to be someone out there set up to do, to uh, take advantage of what you are, who you are, your talent and skill. And I don't want that to happen to any of you. So, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can to answer any and all questions that you may have. All right. Um, well, all right, let me ask you this. Uh, As far as um, like radio advertisers, let me let me let me start with that. Uh, how important is the radio nowadays? Like the physical radio, like between that and and let's say like internet radio, as far as trying to get your name out there. Let me say this to you. Uh, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked that. The internet or the radio, the actual physical radio stations that you hear FM, AM that are playing genres of different music, is an important part to where we are. Uh, for one simple reason, in fact, they pay your royalties. Um, the best way I can describe that is as the Internet market becomes more and more useful, there are a lot of radio stations that act on piracy. They act in, in an ability that where a lot of them still are not paying royalties to ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and all the rest of the publishing uh, uh, overseers, as you know. So the importance behind radio, especially your local radio station, is that they'll pay you and they are paying into companies like ASCAP to ensure you're getting paid for your music. And what they do is they basically are licensing the music of that particular um, company, like ASCAP. They go to ASCAP and they license to get their song catalog. That catalog will consist and persist of any and all artists, songwriters, producers, and publishing companies that they have listed under their particular corporation um, as members. Okay? Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, you know, so it's, it's, it's not a bad thing to, to not be a part of a uh, particular, or, or it's not a bad thing not to be signed with or have your music playing on a radio station. You know, that's the whole purpose. They also distribute it depending on the networks. 
what radio stations have now done is created broadcasting networks. And broadcasting networks are just simply uh, a network of radio stations owned by a mother company or what they call a sister company or affiliate that have yeah. radio stations under control and they are playing uh, music based on a criteria at the corporate company. Uh, back in the days, it used to just be wherever you were located, the radio station would broadcast information that was given to them on a newswire or DJ pools, DJ pools or uh, what they call um, DJs, whoever the, the known DJ was in that area would be signed up to a DJ pool and he would get, you know, the hottest record coming out from a uh, major DJ distributor. Nowadays, because of the Internet, all people can be tuned into the hottest and, and newest sound. So what the radio station had to do was create a broadcast network where they controlled um, networks of information or music that was played. An example would be something that's equivalent to for those who listen to um, uh, Steve Harvey and, and things of that nature, Bubba the Love Sponge, all those people back in the days. They were part of a network that broadcast their, their syndicated show on a worldwide basis. Okay, so um, what would you suggest would be the best way to try to get your music played on the radio? Like, what would be the best avenue? Is it is it uh is it trying to gain a relationship with the with the uh, station, you know, personally, or would it be just trying to get try to you know uh like put out print out a bunch of CDs and pass it uh, pass it along a certain area? to try to get the people to request the song? Well, like, it, it, does one seem to be quicker than the other? Well, uh, I'll tell you, there is no such thing. I, I want to make sure that everyone comprehends what I'm going to say to you. There is no get rich or quick way to do anything in the music business. Um, everything yeah. that I've experienced and everyone that I have met paid their dues in one way, fashion, or form. Some of us have gotten into the music industry based on family who have already done the, the due diligence. Uh, when it comes to getting on a radio network or a radio show, what I have found to be the best avenue is conquer your market. Your market is the city that you're in. How do you do that? You simply, it's a numbers game. Everything is a numbers game. And I'm going to say that periodically throughout this, this conversation in this conference. So if you are with, and let's say you're in St. Louis, um, my best advice would be the more exposure you are, the more you're networking with other artists, and you're not adverse to these artists, especially as producers, songwriters, rappers, and things of that nature. The best asset that you have right now is being able to communicate with other artists and utilizing their skills and their talent, what they're doing, to market you. When you do that, what happens is radio stations have, they all have a criteria. They have to produce, and it's their want to be able to put a platinum plaque, gold plaque, silver plaque, bronze plaque, anything of that nature on their wall from a artist within their area. The only way you can do that a lot of times is to make sure that they see and hear from you so much they cannot deny your presence. You get what I'm saying? So it's about okay. your effort. That's why I said it's not an easy task for everybody to think. There is no get rich uh, quick scheme. Uh, okay. But what you, what you do have now, we didn't have back in the day, is social networking sites, LinkedIn, Facebook, MySpace, and all the rest of them to promote you because now you can reach out to people you never met, never saw, never have to distribute, never have to print, or never have to get uh, uh, certain things that we had to do um, done in order for people to hear your music. You, back in the days, we used to have to get 12-inch vinyls pressed. That was a mandatory. In order to do that, you had to go through this whole process of having professional recordings, having it mastered at a certain studio, because only studio, certain studios did that. And then, you know, um, put it on vinyl and then distribute that to DJ pools and then hope or go to a club and then hope that DJ will play your song if he liked you. Then it started getting into a money thing where DJs realized the power they had by, by all the artists and rappers that were in the area.